ESL teachers, many of you have been asking me the question, can we choose the age range of our student? The answer is no. You can teach toddlers, children, teenagers, young adults, and even older adults. Now, the problem is, what if your student is way, way, way older than you, like 10, 20, 25 years older than you, and your student is smarter than you? By smarter, we mean someone who has more experience, knowledge, and wisdom in life. What are you going to do? You know, teachers, it's important that we're always ready. Don't just master the ABCs, the kinds of uh, animals. You have to really level up your knowledge of English because you wouldn't be able to tell when you'd be able to encounter that student who is older and smarter than you. So if you want to be a better teacher, please watch this video. Before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Teacher Karen, and give this video a thumbs up. <laughs> and uh, teachers, just to give you a background, I've been teaching adults since I was 23 years old. Yep, I've been teaching for about eight years now, so you do the math. And when I was 23, my students' age ranged from 18 years old to 60 or 58 years old, if I'm not mistaken. And take note, I was just 23 years old, and many of my students are like 10, 20, 25 years older than myself. Now, the, the things that I'll be sharing with you would be a combination of things I learned as a trainer and things that I've learned here as an ESL teacher. Tip number one, use TPR with caution. TPR is total physical response. It's when we associate bodily movements and gestures to the words and instructions we give our students. So the TPR that you do when you teach children would be totally different from the TPR that you'd use when you're teaching an adult, especially an adult who's smarter than you, which means their English is already advanced. So to a child, you do, can you hear me this way? Can you hear me? Can you hear teacher? And to an adult, you'd say, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello, good morning. Good morning. Can you hear Hello. me well? Yeah, it's clear. That's good. Could you see me too? Yeah, uh, I can see you. Okay, that's good. <laughs> and tip number two, state your teaching credibility. You have to share with your students what your teaching experience is, what your teaching background is. Do you have a degree in education? Have you been teaching for a year now, for two years, for three years? How long have you been teaching? And other than teaching, what is your job? Are you a businesswoman, a businessman? Are you a doctor? Are you a lawyer? Are you a, a, a school teacher? What do you do for a living? So the purpose of sharing these things to your students is to establish your credibility. Of course, teachers, the way you speak, the way you show yourself, you present yourself will help establish your credibility but of course it would also be or it would also make a big difference if you would state your actual teaching background or your teaching experience now I'd like to introduce myself my name is teacher Karen and I've been teaching English for eight years now other than teaching I'm also a CE this is what I do tip number three address your student by their name. Don't address your student as sir or ma'am, Miss Karen, Sir Bob. Just address them by whatever name they gave you. The reason why I'm asking you to avoid addressing them like with sir or ma'am, just like what we Filipinos are used to, is because you are the person with authority. You're not the boss, of course, but you are the person who has the authority because you're the teacher. Therefore, you shouldn't make your student feel that like they're your boss or you're beneath them or, you know, you are their subordinate. But of course, you should not make your student feel as well that you are more superior than them or you are, you know, like the boss of them. No. What about you? What's your name and what do you do? Uh, I'm Michael. Uh, I work in a local government. Hmm, I see. Have you been working there for a long time, Michael? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's really a long time. Oh, I see. Well, number four. Let them talk about themselves. 
You know, teachers, based on research, adults love to talk about themselves. You know why? Because it feels good. <laughs> it feels good. That's why they enjoy talking about themselves. So if you would like to help the student improve their fluency, their pronunciation, and so on, just ask questions related to themselves. If I'd ask you, um, do you like your job? Is that something you like doing? No, oh, <laughs> uh, just a living. Ah, I see. Well, back in the years, what was your dream job, Michael? What did you want to become? Mm, dream job? Mm, uh, maybe I want to be a, uh, can I say, um, a designer, like something, um, uh, animation, a designer. A graphic designer. A uh, right? graphic designer or, uh, how can I say? Mm, uh, someone who can, uh, who, whose job is to uh, produce uh, animation. Wow. Y it seems like you really have a creative side, Michael. <laughs> you have a creative uh, side. Yeah, you can see that. <laughs> so my question is, have you ever been anywhere around the world? Yeah, I've been to uh, Singapore, uh, Singapore, uh, Saban, Saban Island. Mm, wow. Okay, uh, it's not, it's, yeah, and the, the, the west coast of the USA. Oh, great. Have you been to the U.S. for a long time? I mean, have you stayed there for a long time or just a few no, days? Uh, sadly, it was a short time, about one week. Oh, it was just like a short trip to the U.S., right? Yeah. Oh, well, which, is your, which one is your favorite country so far? Which did you like? Tip number five, add value to your class. By adding value, I mean other than the teaching or the learning agenda for that class, expand their knowledge, extend their knowledge. You have to share things that are somehow related to your topic for the class, but it's beyond the scope of what you're supposed to teach. Let's say you're going to be teaching your student about the internet. Why not have knowledge extension or uh, yeah, knowledge extension about, let's say, cybercrime, about hoax. Why not have knowledge extension about internet-related terms? It may not be totally part of your, your teaching plan or your lesson plan, but still, it's related to the topic, and it's something that they could use in their everyday lives. There's a common term for that that Americans and people all, of the world, uh, all, all over the world use. They call those animations anime. That's a common term anime. for that, anime. Uh, okay. As long as... Yes, when you're pertaining to Japanese characters like Naruto, Sailor Moon, Dragon Ball, and the popular Japanese cartoons, uh, the term for that would be anime, okay? Anime, okay. That's you mean good. to say you are good at drawing anime? Okay. Uh, yeah, electronic uh, devices. Actually, uh, the iPad I bought, I bought is, I use, I, I'm using right now is, uh, is bought from the internet. Wow, that's amazing. There are so many things nowadays that you can buy from the internet, right? And if you're going to be reading more about online shopping, you'll often come across it as uh, e-commerce. This is also another word that the internet uses to describe online shopping, e-commerce. Right? E Tip number six, teach based on the student's learning goal. You know, when you're teaching adults, they always have this goal or this motivation. They want to be better at what they do. They want to be able to do their jobs better. They want to be able to teach their children. They want to be able to look up information online. They want to be able to speak well with foreigners. So many reasons, so many motivations, teachers. And what's important is your lesson, the objectives, and the reason why you are asking them to do what you ask them to do should revolve around their motivation. Let's say the student wants to teach their children. Oh, by the way, you can also use um, this lesson material when you are teaching your daughter about the alphabet. You see, again, I am relating it to their goal. Interested in knowing why you like to learn English, Michael. Uh, what is this interest for? Um, um. Okay, it's it's a big story. Uh, it's a big question. Um, I just put it easy. Um, I think I'd like to uh, get a foreign information uh, by myself, not by a uh, second uh, hand. Ah, you mean to say when you're looking things up online and it's in a foreign language, you want to be able to understand it well and be able to look up any kind of foreign information by yourself. Is that right? Mm. Yeah, yeah. I I don't want to. Uh, you know, uh, it's. It's so complete. You, you get uh, so many information from the internet, and some of them are fake, uh, and I want to be full from, from them. Ah, I see. You want to be someone who is wise whenever you are uh, browsing the internet. That's actually, that term, that you know, false information that you get on the internet, is actually called a hoax in English. Um, have you been using
Tip number seven, relate the lesson to your student. Every single time you teach them something, you draw it from the student's experience or your experience as the, as the teacher. But of course, our priority would be the student's experience. You could ask them if they've already experienced eating in a restaurant, in an American restaurant, when your topic for the day would be about dining. You can ask them about their favorite movie when your topic for the day would be about going to the cinema. You see, we are always relating it to their experience because for adults, it's easier to learn something if it's relatable. Now, uh, my question for you is, uh, what is the main purpose of the internet in your life? What do you usually use it for? Mm, for me, uh, its main purpose uh, is to, uh, to get information, uh, to, to watch uh, videos on, on the internet, mm, some videos about, uh, about English or some videos, uh, some TV series, uh, like American series, TV series. Uh, right now, uh, the new season has uh, has uh, has uh, public published, uh, which is uh, Love uh, Machine and Death season two. Oh, uh, by Netflix. Oh, you're able to watch Netflix. Do you use VPN? <laughs> uh, actually, uh, we I have a app can uh, who uh, transfer uh, transfer the foreign foreign TV series. <sighs> That's great. That's great. It seems like you have so much exposure to the English speaking community because you have access to Netflix and you're able to look up more information online, not just in Chinese. Tip number eight, give specific feedback. You have to pinpoint exactly when and where the student committed this mistake. That's why it helps a lot if you're going to be able to give feedback as soon as possible, like right away. Of course, it shouldn't come to the point when where you are interrupting the student. Never do that. Just let them finish. Then right after, you could provide your feedback. And in regards to uh, your answer, Michael, I'd like to give feedback on two words that you just said earlier. Let me put it on the board first. The first word is purpose. Purpose. Make sure you do not add an additional sound here. Because sometimes it sounds like purpose, purpose. Instead of purpose, it's purpose, pus, pus. Okay, purpose. Yes. Purpose. Now, for the word internet, make sure you do not add an additional sound here, making it sound like internet. Internet. It's there's actually two ways to say it. It's in ter net internet net net internet or mm -hmm. yeah. this is the American English uh uh on how to say internet. We say inner net oh, internet. internet. Uh huh. It's easier. <laughs> Either you say it as internet or internet. Tip number nine: always verify understanding. It's important, teachers, that you always ask open-ended questions, such as, "What questions do you have? Are there words here that you don't understand?" Notice, teachers, I'm not asking the question, "Do you have questions?" Because if you ask that, most of the time they just say no. And it's important that you encourage your students to ask. So. Often, oftentimes, you have to verify the student's understanding. The words inside the box here. Can you please read all the words inside the box first? Okay, history, human, information, communication, business. Are any of these words um, unfamiliar to you, or do you know them all? Mm, I think I know them all. Okay. To focus more on some of the words that I taught you. So, um, what do we call that term again um, involving false information over the internet? How do we call it? Uh, Very good. How do we spell it? How do we spell it? O -A -S. Very good. Uh, what's another word for online shopping? Uh, e-commerce. Very good. And um, how or what is another way for us to say the prefix inter? Uh, inner, inner. Yes. Could you read this for me, please? International. What about the second way? Oh, uh, international. Aha, uh -huh, good job. <laughs> international. And finally, give practical advice. When we say practical, this would be things that they could do in their everyday lives, that it's going to be fitting in with their schedule, with their lifestyle. At the same time, they can use it to better how they do things. And when it comes to useful advice, I'll be creating a separate video on useful pieces of advice that you could give your students. But teachers, one thing to avoid is that you shouldn't be giving generic pieces of advice, just like watching English TV shows or reading English books, and that's it. Don't stick to that. Your feedback and your advice should be customized and personalized. And what I also notice, uh, this is also a skill for advanced English learners. You self-correct, which is good. And I need you to continue doing that, that when you oh, mispronounce okay. words, Continue correcting yourself right away. Okay. Uh, thank you for mentioning it. Sometimes I feel regret. So I feel awful uh, for for keep uh, self correcting myself. Uh, I feel because I have made a false. Uh, so something I feel I felt I feel regretful.
Ah, well, yes, it does feel regretful and it's something that, you know, feels, doesn't feel good, but it's something that will remind you constantly of your mistakes so that the next time you wouldn't do it again. Just like how you are correcting yourself with your grammar. I notice you also correct yourself when your sentences are grammatically incorrect. In the early stages of your English speaking, you will notice that you are self-correcting more. But the more you get to speak with someone in English, you will be self-correcting less. It lessens over time. There you have it, teachers, the 10 tips on how to be a better teacher to older and smarter adults. I hope this video is helpful to all of you. And to those of you who don't have teaching experience, or let's say this is your first job, don't worry. I became a teacher or a trainer at the age of 23 with zero teaching experience, right? It doesn't mean that just because you don't have experience, would you be a terrible teacher? As long as you have passion, you have dedication and commitment to better yourselves, you can even be better than teachers who have years of experience. Okay, so don't forget teachers to do the usual, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, Teach a Karen, and comment down below if you have any questions about this content or any video requests. And be a blessing to the people around you. Goodbye.